Can you just wave your hands and magnify the Lord? It's none like Him. We worship Him because we are created to worship. We adore you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for your awesome presence. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. You are awesome in Father, we thank you for your holy presence in this place. Truly, you are worthy of our praise. This is the reason why we live. To adore, to extol, and to praise you. And I thank you for your presence that is mighty in this place. And tonight, I make a request, Lord, that through the ministry of your word, you will transform your children. You will enlighten and empower us. Give us a shift in destiny. Renew our minds by your word. Let us see as you see. Let us know the things that have been declared about us. Let ignorance be shaken off our lives. Let every stronghold that the enemy has placed in our minds be broken down. And let your children enter into the liberty of the sons of God. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Please, before you sit down, I want to do something tonight before we continue. I know it's going to be a surprise to, to the individual. But I want us to pray for Hope, our assistant music director. Please come. His birthday was within the week on Thursday. And... Um, Nematek, is that how you celebrate your... Amen. And uh, I was just praying last night and God said to pray for him before we start teaching. Amen. How many of you have been blessed by his ministry? You don't know what it means to sit. <laughs> Amen. You know, you don't know what it means to sit on that keyboard and just create an atmosphere that permits God to interact with his people. Amen. And I want you to know that we honor you and we love you and we bless you. Can we pray for him? Is that okay? I want you to stretch your hands in one minute and release a blessing upon his life that the Lord will empower, will strengthen, release grace upon him. We declare that this is a new season for him. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we declare greater grace, multiplied grace for him. The Lord take you to the peak of your career. Take you to heights in ministry. The Lord cause you to love him sincerely, experientially. The Lord make your life a model of his presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus, a vessel unto glory. In the name of Jesus, we decree from today... That you are ushered into the mystery of sounds and songs from the heavens. Let the angels of the Lord come to you at the night time and in the morning to teach you the songs of the Spirit. And may your sound resound in every nation. In Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. Can we clap for him and bless you? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Are we ready tonight? Are you excited to be in the presence of God? Please take your beautiful seat. 
and let's take a journey into the world of life oh god you are my god and i will always seek you oh god you are my god and i will always seek you and i will always seek you sing oh And I will always seek you. And I will always seek you. I will seek you. I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your ways. For step by step you lead me. And I will fall. You know, this is pneumatic. This is a place where we come to experience week after week the wisdom, the presence and the power of Jesus. These are the three major dimensions by which God makes us and conforms us to His Son. Through the instrumentality of His wisdom. His wisdom comes from His Word. The light that comes by the entrance of his word I want us to create a habit in this house of seeking God personally let go beyond just what we come to do here every Sunday as a believer that is connected to this house I want you to make it a habit to seek God daily seek the knowledge of God and above all seek to grow and to be conformed in him According to the song, he says, step by step, you will lead me. In Isaiah, he said, precept upon precept, line upon line. You cannot know all of God in one day. Impartations are good. Miracles are good. But there is a system in place by which God makes men. God will never use a man he has not made. And that's why you are here. There is a curriculum that God follows in your personal transformation from glory unto glory there is a scheme of work that we follow not every and any knowledge is instrumental for your growth per time do you understand what i'm saying please listen to me before i get into the word listen to what i'm saying not every knowledge is useful to you for your growth per time not every knowledge not every knowledge Food is good, is it not? But if you are hungry now and I put a bowl of raw rice, parboiled rice, before you, and then in another bowl, stew is there, will you eat? But is that rice food? Is it food? But not food that is needed or not food in the right uh, uh, um, state. That's what I mean when I say not every knowledge is useful for your growth part time. I have to say this because I see a lot of believers in their zeal to want to know God and in their quest to want to be on fire for God, scavenging on every message, scavenging on every book. Once they see a book with somebody, they want to read that book because they feel that in reading it, they become spiritual. Or they become they keep they become current they are part of the trendy spiritual people as much as all of that is good you must understand that for every phase of your journey with God there is a particular stream of knowledge that is needed for you please listen to what I'm saying this night it may sound simple but this is fundamental for your growth and the Bible says true wisdom is a house built and by understanding it is established in another in another part of the bible in psalms it says except the lord builds the house they labor in vain that build so your your life is a house that god is building 
and God is building that house with wisdom wisdom is the right appropriation and application of knowledge you can have enough knowledge at your beck and call or at your disposal per time but the wisdom of God knows which is needed for your growth at that time so if God will build a man he builds that man stage by stage just the way a house is built at some point the masons are working and at some point they have to stop their work for the carpenters to continue sometimes the masons will have to stop until the electricians are done with the installation and when the electricians are done the masons will come back to continue so sometimes the emphasis in your life may be on prayer and then at that time there's so much hunger for prayer every time you go to the word of god you don't find so much revelation coming all you see in the world is prayer there's just this drive and hunger for you to pray every message on prayer you want to listen to that is okay for that time but you need to know when the holy spirit is done with that aspect and he's switching you to another and some of us don't know when that switch happens we try to still force that to be a part of our our daily life but you don't rush god you must follow the wood the lay down wisdom the laid down blueprint for your growth you must understand the model for your own transformation first it is important anything outside of knowing god is is christianity in in its most reckless and most shamble form the extent of the power of god that you can command the extent of the fullness of god that you can carry the extent of the life of god you can portray is all tied to the knowledge of god you have per time the ways of the kingdom the ways of god is not magic you must know those systems to be able to replicate them and reveal god to your generation and that's the reason why as much as we thank god for last week's miracle service we are always in the business week after week of ensuring that believers are matured through the exposure to the word of god it's not a waste of time i'm telling you some of you may not need this truth now but in two years time in a year from now three months from now some of you you will be in your retreat three months from now and god will tell you go back to this message listen to it because at the end of the day god wants us to grow in the knowledge of him and to be conformed to the image of his son jesus said in john chapter 17 verse 3 he said and this is eternal life that they may know you the one and only true god and jesus christ whom you have sent that they may know you paul said that i may know him what's your desire there's an end to all of this miracle seeking is good i believe in miracles but there's an end sooner or later that hunger for the knowledge of god and you will cry again and it is so customized that nothing else but the knowledge of god can satisfy it and so man and woman boy and girl young and old everybody under the sound of my voice in this hall of following online let's make it a quest to know god daily live to know him live to know him that's why we are alive let your existence be powered by the knowledge of that life that is at work inside of you and i, I assure you you will leave nothing short of a sign and a wonder to your generation praise the name of the lord the lord will do us good tonight in jesus name i have a series that will begin today possibly that will last us for the next three weeks and i want us to pay attention because i believe it's going to really bless us it is going to help us understand certain things certain concepts that have been misunderstood will be clarified this night and my prayer and earnest desire is that god will transport men by his power into the realities and the possibilities that exist in his world if you believe that for yourself say amen. amen that god will transport you and that's what god does every time you listen to the word of god there is power inherent in that word 
to catapult you into the very experience everything that we read in this bible is an experience is a reality but it is existent in a spiritual dimension it resides in a spiritual plane so what happens is that inside of this world is a power that is able to transport and translate you in ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 he says son of man stand up on your feet and i'll speak to you and in verse 2 he said and the spirit entered into me and set me on my feet when he spoke so while he was saying son of man stand up in that word was the power to bring the manifestation of the same so he stood not on his feet he stood on the word that was spoken to him just the same way when jesus met the disciples in the sea while he walked on water peter told him if it is you master bid me to come and jesus said come and the bible says peter walked on water to jesus it was not on water he walked he walked on that word come in that word come was the power available to transport peter to the very dimension of the miraculous that jesus was operating in so it's more than just war it's more than just a sermon sooner or later you will realize that your life is dependent on the power that is encapsulated in this world and so above all that god gives you i want you to cherish the knowledge of his word that comes oh and this night many of us will be blessed in the name of jesus write this down the blessed life the blessed life in bracket god's portrait the blessed life in bracket god's portrait where's an usher uh, i think you should bring that fan forward it's not it's not any good there bring it closer to them amen maybe next Sunday we need to get a fan here too because I'm sweating here amen the blessed life so it's going to be in three parts and each of the parts will have a subtopic just for our understanding part one part two part three there's a lot i will share about in part two and in part three but part one today is the definition the definition or you can put the foundations this is going to be the bedrock for this teaching i want to tell you how God inspired me to teach on this this inspiration came just last month Proverbs chapter 10 verse 22 I just want to show you why we are teaching on this just to be able to explain to us what we are trying to look at tonight the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and he what adds no sorrow with it now i have read the book of proverbs again and again every year i finish the book of proverbs twice and i've done that for five years now steadily so i have read this verse again and again and where my reason for reading proverbs is just i wanted wisdom i want wisdom and that's the book of wisdom in the bible and you know one thing about the word of god is any dimension of god that you want to capture once you find it in the word of god make it a make a habit of reading and studying it again and again and meditating on it till the spirit component in that scripture enters into you it is the spirit dimension of that scripture that will empower you to become a manifestation of that word do you understand what i'm saying so i've read this scripture again and again but a few months ago i was reading this and the Lord stopped me to read in between the lines and truly understand what God is saying here. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich. Unfortunately, we live in a time and in a dispensation where, you know, in the past, in every dispensation, there was a revival. 
there was a move of God. And every move of God was bursted by the release of a particular revelation of God's word. Somebody found a revelation of scripture and that revelation sparked out a move. For instance, in the time of Martin Luther, he found where it was written that the just shall live by faith and that we are saved by grace. And he realized that salvation is not earned against what was practiced in his days. In his days, you had to do all kinds of rituals, rites, penance, here and there, to earn salvation. But when he found from the scripture that we were saved by grace through faith and not of works, that birthed a move and a revival in his time. So in every generation, there is a revelation of God's word that will come to birth a move. And God will have them emphasize on that particular portion of scripture so that the body of Christ can mature in it and then move into the next phase. The only problem was that when it was time to move to the next revelation, some of them made a monument of the last. And so in the 90s, the preaching of prosperity became very popular in the church. From the American church, it came down to the African church because we had been used to poverty in church believing that that was a way by which you could be saved or that being poor meant that you were closer to god is that true many of us come from traditional churches where it was practiced it may not have been said but that's what is practiced but the preaching of divine and kingdom prosperity became popular in the 90s i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. Please follow me tonight. I'm, I'm taking you somewhere. And so people began to realize, ah, that so we don't need to escape into eternity before we enter into prosperity. That we can enjoy prosperity even here. It is God's desire that we prosper. Prior to that belief, we had been taught that prosperity was for unbelievers. And in fact, there were churches where they, you were not allowed to buy certain things in your house, like television. And I, I thank God that those churches have changed their beliefs now. Is that true? Yes. Because they said television was the devil's box. You were not allowed to get a car. I remember those days in my native church. At the time, there were only two people that had cars in the church. The general overseer and my uncle. And my uncle put an alarm on his car. So if you kick the tires, the car will start shouting. And we as children, we love the shout. So while they were in church, we would come down from our children hall and go and kick it. You know. But then the preaching of prosperity began to emerge. And believers began to contend for true wealth. And we saw and realized that wealth which we have left for the people of the world was actually our inheritance and our possession. But then, the extreme of that teaching made many believers to believe that it is the quantifying of the material possessions that you have that makes you prosperous, which is wrong. That was the extreme of that teaching. So every time you talk about blessing, to an average believer he begins to think of material acquisitions like cars like houses like what again i don't know if we should call women's makeup box an asset i think we should call it because some, some of one powder there can be thirty thousand amen oh, not up to right i think we should if you if you quantify everything elizabeth clarence What's, what are the designers now? Eh? Mary Kay? Tara? I don't even know that one. Amen. <laughs> you know, but I just, I feel you should, maybe we should, we should begin to start quantifying that as an asset. By the time you sell everything together and it's like 200,000, don't you, is that not a fortune? Ladies, say amen. <laughs> I've come again, but so many people feel that when you talk about blessing you are talking about material acquisitions 
but this is what the word of god says it says the blessing of the lord does what makes one what rich that means you can be rich and not be blessed come on somebody talk to me you know if you go on the news now you online it's you the news of ritual killing is everywhere young people desperate to enter into their future today you know killing others just just you know to to be able to perform rituals money rituals recently i saw a story online and i was i was i was i was dumbfounded i had to pray for mercy that you now hear people sleeping with dogs and animals how many of you saw that story why all in the bid to get or to acquire material possessions but here the bible is defining to us that the true blessing that comes from god is the type that will make you rich but you can be rich without the blessing so the fact that you are rich doesn't mean you are blessed what makes you rich is because you are blessed he said the blessing of the lord it shows you the first source that blessings come from god the bible says all good and perfect gifts comes from where above not abroad so there are many people who want to travel abroad because they feel they can find greener pastures i hope you know there are still people suffering in other countries there are still ghettos and slums in america i hope you know he said the blessing of the lord makes one rich and i like the last part of that verse and it adds no sorrow do you have that verse in message translation proverbs 10 22. please quickly so that we can save time message look at this he said god's blessing makes life what rich now let's read the last sentence together i want to go nothing we do can improve on god that means when god has blessed you he has blessed you there's nothing else you can do to try to help god express the blessing or make bold the blessing god's blessing makes life rich notice the is in, is in singular not plural blessing not blessings blessing so if you understand truly what the blessing is then you will know that all of these things that we have in life is a derivative of it now i want to give you seven uh not up to seven anyway but i want to give you distinguishing reasons between the concept of riches and the blessing i don't know if the media can project it for me but i'll just read it from here I just want to give you a few uh, distinctions between uh, of the concept of riches and blessing i want to be able to demarcate it for you and distinguish them with facts the concept of riches and the blessing distinguishing facts distinguishing between the concepts of riches and the blessing well i don't know i don't think they can see it but let me just read it out and somehow maybe we'll get it printed or something number one riches are believed by the world to be based on hard work the world's concept the world's concept of riches is that it is based on hard work it comes based on hard work so you have to work hard if you don't sweat there's a saying an adage they use they say pay today so that you can play tomorrow isn't it but if it is true that you must work hard to be rich then the people who are breaking stones should be the richest talk to me come on have you seen those people breaking stones before so the world's view of riches is that it comes based on hard work 
but for the blessing it comes as a result of the grace and the favor of God when the grace and the favor of God is upon your life you are blessed and if the Bible says that the blessings of God makes one rich it means automatically you are rich you may not be rich now financially or materially but that's who you are potentially and it's just a matter of time for it to manifest because truly the blessing makes one rich number two another distinguishing factor here or reason the world see riches as amassing large amounts of money and material things the world see riches as amount, amassing large amounts of money and material things so the world will judge you to be rich based on how much money you have in your bank account i'm not talking about the one you borrowed from opay o cash what, what are those loan sharks huh what are those apps are they called loan sharks and please let me advise you let me advise you huh please stop the habit of borrowing last year i taught you on kingdom prosperity we had a full series you can go and get the message you can meet the media after the service and get the message full series i told you one of the laws that god gave me for kingdom prosperity is that borrowing is an anti-covenant practice did you hear what i said borrowing is anti-covenant every time you borrow you shut the hands of god from from your resources from your finances I know we have many seemingly legitimate reasons why we borrow in quote but borrowing still remains anti-covenant the bible says in deuteronomy 28 28 rather it says you shall lend to many nations and you shall not what borrow a lot of people who are who are trapped by those loan uh, um, um, apps what you call them they will advertise they say you can borrow as much as three hundred thousand and you that you you have not earned three hundred thousand before you now go and borrow three hundred thousand and you know the bad thing about borrowing most times when you borrow you spend it on consumables the moment you spend your loan on consumables you are already in debt this is my concept this is not the word of god but this is my belief you may not like it but this is my belief i feel that the only reason why you should take loans is for investment and not as an individual but as a company or as a business entity you know that's different why because the business can reproduce to pay back that loan but don't borrow as an individual no so the world see riches as a massing of large amounts of money and material things cars g-wagon lamborghini what else some of you don't want to talk but you know you know that's your dream is your dream car huh many of you you, you put the picture of g-wagon in your bedroom and every day you go and say i am confession and point your hand there <laughs> i receive I, I walk in prosperity till infinity say oh god i must get this and you will get the g-wagon in jesus name just slow down amen just do what tell your neighbor slow down you will learn many things in this series though but for the blessing it is a spiritual reality that is conferred on an individual by a sp superior spiritual deity that attracts material properties this is what the blessing is is a spiritual reality conferred on an individual by a superior deity so the blessing is not natural is a spiritual reality it is conferred on it's not something you earn it's something that is bestowed on you by an authority and a deity that is more superior to you and then the result of it is that it will attract material properties around you oh god is putting an anointing to attract wealth in somebody's life today before the end of this series the anointing that will make you attractable 
to financial and material resources comes upon your life if you believe it shall be better amen. amen you have to believe it it is true it is a reality it is true number three the world see riches or the, it, when it comes to the concept of riches the world believe in luck they say opportunity comes but try your luck and there's a scripture to support them ecclesiastes 9 verse 11 and i returned and saw under the sun that they say the, the, the what uh, the the race is not for the swift nor the battle for the strong nor what for the the bread for the rich he said but time and chance happened to the that's the definition of luck time and chance that's what the world believe in just work hard one day you'll be lucky one day hustle go pay is that true but let's look at God's concept. Go to the, the blessing. But a man that is blessed relies on the mercies of God that can create golden opportunities repeatedly. So to that man, there's nothing like luck. If it happened yesterday, it can happen today. God can make somebody bless you five times in one week. It's possible. It's called the mercies of God. It gives you what you don't deserve. I like that song. I'm the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. How many of you know that song? I'm the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown me mercy. You have shown me mercy. Sing it one more time. I'm the one, say, I'm the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. You have shown mercy. That's the concept of the blessing as opposed to law. It relies on the mercy of God. And the Bible says that this mercy of God, they are new every morning. That means there is a fresh allocation for you every day apostle but why is my life like this you just don't know that's why you've not taken advantage of your own allo allocation so your allocation has been piling up for you you have not known that the mercies of god are released for you every day the bible says it daily loads us with benefits and i pray for somebody that by reason of this knowledge now may god restore to you all the allocations that has evaded you in the name of jesus Amen. number four the world's concept of riches the world believes in striving to make ends meet is that true doing two or three jobs per time why just to make ends meet so that you can have enough for this have enough for that but under the blessing a blessed man carries a divine supply mentality yes he believes in hard work but as he goes around his business he's, ca he's carrying a divine supply mentality that my god shall supply so even if the business fail i will still eat is that true hmm. i saw one picture one day somebody's whatsapp status they showed a lion and the lion you know the lion like when they are roaring and they wrote on that like the lion was making a statement the lion said even if there are no animals in the jungle i will not eat grass that's a lion and now the bible says in psalms 34 verse 9 or 10 he said the young lions do hunger and suffer lack but those who seek god shall not lack any good thing how many of you believe that oh there are scriptures you need to see that will change your mentality those who see God shall not lack any good thing. Number five, the world's concept of riches sees it as widely acclaimed, widely, widely acclaimed as financial and material gains and benefits. So their concept is that at the general perspective, riches are financial and material gains. But can I tell you something? My father in the Lord said, 
if you have to spend money to get or to buy everything in your life you are poor you don't believe that because there is wealth other than financial and material gain look at the, the column for the blessing number five it is inclusive of financial material relational there's something called the gift of men the wealth of men you may not have 10 naira but you have 10 men that each of them has 10 naira let me tell you the truth one of my one of my mentors said if you have five millionaires in your life then you didn't count well they are not five they are six because you are number six because a friend to millionaires is a millionaire if you have 10 people around you that are millionaires you are a millionaire already because what it means to be a millionaire is not having one million in your account it's not even earning and spending in millions alone it's having the intelligence the capacity and the systems that allows a man to flourish in the realm of millions the intelligence the capacity and systems around him when you have 10 of those kind of people around you you are a millionaire because the bible says in proverbs 13 that he that walketh with the wise shall be what wise but a companion of fools shall be what destroyed so there's a relational aspect and most of all spiritual gain this is under the concept of the blessing is inclusive of financial material relational and most of all spiritual gain number six and the last i'll give you more maybe subsequent weeks the concept of the world for riches number six the seed as time-based and can be liquidated in the face of socio-economic challenges that's the truth about riches they are time-based and they can be liquidated a billionaire can fall your stocks can be out of market your business can crash in the face of socio-economic challenges in 2020 many businesses crashed yes or no and many businesses rose but look at the blessing it is eternal in nature both in terms of sources and sustainability so even if your business fails even if you lose your job even if everything that represents the riches around your life falls as long as you are blessed understand that there is a system around you that will replicate your yesterday today you can still bounce back that's why the bible says when the righteous falls how many times seven times he will what rise again you know why because the righteous is the blessed come on hit your chest and say i am the blessed of the lord do you believe that so very quickly before we close qualities or criteria of the blessed life number one please give me volume this mic is not loud enough number one this is what i'm talking about now is what it means to be blessed all right i've showed you the concept of the blessing six statements that define what the blessing really is but i want to show you the qualities or the criteria of the blessed life what you should look out for in a life to show that that life is the blessed life so these are qualities or criteria of the blessed life number one to be blessed is to be called of god 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 Isaiah chapter 51 verse 2 verse 1 and 2 rather listen to me you who follow after righteousness you who seek the Lord look to the rock from which you were hewn and to the hole 
of the pit from which you were dug. Verse 2. Look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. What's happening now? Do we need to pray? Amen. Look to, say, look to Abraham your father and to Sarah who bore you. For I called him alone and I did what? Blessed him and increased him. That means the first portrait of the blessing in scripture is the life of a man called Abraham. And all through this series we want to examine that life sound please walk on it i can't hear the sound on this side the first time the word blessing is identified with a man in scripture after the fall of adam and eve was abraham and there's an instruction in this scripture it said look to abraham your father for i called him alone and blessed him and increased him now let me show you something about abraham's life genesis 24 abraham was the portrait of the blessed life as far as scripture is concerned and scripture is instructing us to look at his life we can learn principles from him we can look at his life how he walked with god and what brought him into this dimension of the blessing so that we can lay hold of it genesis 24 verse 1 let's look at abraham's life for instance now abraham was old well advanced in age please read this last sentence together with me at the count of three one two three and the lord had blessed abraham in what in what stop put your name there remove abraham one to go and the lord has blessed jonathan that's what it means to be blessed now, that's the reason why I showed you from my distinguishing facts that the blessing is beyond material and financial acquisition. The Bible says that it is possible for a man to be blessed in all things. Financially, materially, with men, spiritually. All round, his mind was blessed. The fruit of his body was blessed. Is it possible for a man to come to this place where everything around him is blessed? Yes, and that's what we are going to see this night. Are we ready? Let me show you more about Abraham's life. Give me verse 35 and then verse 31. Verse 35 and then verse 31. More about the life of Abraham. And the Lord has blessed my master. This is Abraham's servant speaking. When he went to pick a wife for Isaac, he met with Laban and his sister Rebekah and their father. Look at what he said. This was the testimony of Abraham's servant. He said, The Lord has blessed my master greatly and he has become great. That means that when the blessing of God come upon you, you become what? Great. And he has given him flocks and herds silver and gold male and female servants and camels and donkeys verse 31 and he said come in O blessed of the lord why do you stand outside for i have prepared the house and a place for the camels now this was laban the brother of rebecca talking to abraham's servant Remember that when Abraham sent his servant to look for a wife for Isaac, the Bible says he loaded 30 camels with all kinds of good things. You are going to look for a wife and you carry 30 camels. That is like carrying 30 containers. How many of you know containers? That's what he meant. Because in those days, camels were their containers. Do we understand that? You are going to look for a wife. Even if it's emo state you are going to marry from, you don't need all that. Yes or no? And some of brothers, you don't know. Especially all these brothers that are single. Better know the different customs in Nigeria. Before you go and like a lady, and when you go there and they give you lists, you speak in tongues in capital letters. Amen. 
but God will empower you in Jesus' name. He went with so much and they saw him and because they saw that he was he appeared blessed they said come in oh blessed so blessed was abraham that his servant who was born in his house was called blessed now look at genesis chapter 12 from verse 1 to 3. now the lord had said to abraham get out of your country from your family and from your father's house to a land that i will show you and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be what? Blessed. This was the promise of the blessing to Abraham. And many years later in chapter 24, the Bible told us that God had blessed him in all things, including his servants were blessed. That means when the blessing of God is upon you, it's only a matter of time. Everything around you will carry the signature of that blessing. Everything around you, everything. There is a scripture I will show you very soon, which I consider what God desires for the life of every believer. This is what it means to be blessed. So go back to Isaiah 51. Now I told us number one. Number one criteria of the blessed life is to be called of God. To be called of God. You first must be called of God. The Bible told us that God called Abraham out of his father's house, out of his kindred, out of his families. Please tell them to come inside. I don't like people standing outside tell them to come inside quickly I don't know what's going on outside but I'm distracted please look up here God called him out of his country out of his father's house understand that where Abraham was living at that time was the world economic power that place was called Ur of the Chaldeans it was called Mesopotamia that was the hub of civilization global civilization Abraham was already rich when God called him. But God's promise for Abraham was not riches. His promise for Abraham was blessing. So God had to call him out. So the first criteria of the blessed life is that he is called of God. Romans chapter 8 verse 28. He said, for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. And to them that are what? Be called. He must call you out of something. And for every one of us believers, we have been called out of darkness. That's what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. We have been called out of darkness into His marvelous light. So that's the first criteria. That you must be called. I'm not talking about ministerial calling. I'm talking about the calling of redemption. I'm talking about the calling that is the election of grace. That's the reason why in the I Am Confession, it says, I am the called, set apart for a glorious future in Him. Romans chapter 8 verse 30, it says, Moreover, those that He predestined, them He called. Those that He called, them He justified. And those that He justified, them He what? glorified you must be called you must be called your calling which defines your divine destiny is an election of grace your calling which defines your divine destiny is an election of grace so the grace of God found us in our sin the grace of God found us in our misery the grace of God found us and has brought us it has called us out of and into something into a God ordained destiny look at 1st Corinthians 1 verse 26 to 29 he said for you see your calling brethren you see the word calling there isn't it that not many wise according to the flesh not many mighty not many noble are called you know why 
Go back to that verse. Let me read it again. For you see your calling, brethren, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. Why did God not call the wise? Why did he not call the, 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 the mighty? Because if God called them out, there will be nothing to give to them because they already feel that they have what it takes to be blessed. Do you understand what I'm saying? He said, not many of them, wise, or mighty, or noble, are called. But let's look at the real reason why. Next verse. He said, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. Go on, we are reading down to verse 29. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are. So the reason why he looked at you in your poor state and still called you to redemption. Why? Is so that no flesh should glory. So that when the blessing comes on you and you become rich, you will not say that you were already rich before he found you. Do you understand that? You must be called. Like God called Abraham. And if you are here and you are a born again child of God, that calling is already on your life. And like Abraham, he promised Abraham that he will make him a blessing. I want to let you know that you are a work in progress. You are going progressively to the point where you truly will be a blessing to your generation. If you are with me, say a big amen. amen. So criteria number one, you must be called of God. Criteria number two. is to receive divine promises number one is to be called of god number two is to receive divine promises second corinthians chapter 1 verse 19 to 20. second corinthians 9 1 rather verse 19 to 20. for the son of god jesus christ who was preached among you by us by me silvano by me Silvanus and Timothy was not yes and no, but in him was yes. Next verse. For all the promises of God in him are what? Yes. And in him. Amen. To the glory of God through us. God did not only call Abraham, he gave him a promise. He said, I will bless you. I will make you great. I will bless those that bless you. And cause those that curse you. And through you all the families. There was a promise on his life. Not only has God called you. But there is a promise for you in Christ Jesus. Don't say it's too basic. You must know. In order for you to lay hold of those promises. Those promises will define your destiny. It will define your possession in Christ. It will define who you will become. Your reality. There is a promise. Tell your neighbor, I have a promise. Tell your neighbor by the other side, I have a promise. It says all the promises of God are yes and amen. Amen means it is. Numbers 23 verse 19, he says, For God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent of his word. Has he said it, shall he not do it? Has he spoken it, shall he not make it good? God is not like man that will promise and fail. Na 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 you know they use me play the reason why many people are depressed is because they are hanging on the promises of men one of the reasons they are hanging on the promises of men i know he's a senator but he's still a man i know he's a bank manager but he's still a man he's still collecting salary i know he's a multi-millionaire a, a multinational you know businessman but he's still a man the best of man is man but the promises of god are yea god see we, before god promised you before the foundation of the world all the power and the component to bring to pass his promises were put in place before you were created 
God is not the type of God that will tell you about your future and after that start planning it. No. Just like a man can say, I will build a two-story building as a house. He has not built it. Then the next day he goes to start planning. That's not God. When God says he will do something, he has done it already. He is only downgrading himself. He is reducing himself so that your language as a man can understand. Because before God, there is nothing like past and present. He lives in the realm of now. As he says it, it is. The only reason why your life has not become what he has said is because you are in time. Time will process everything that God has said. To receive the promise. The book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 6. Look at Hebrews 6 verse 13 to 19. We have a promise in Christ Jesus. It is the knowledge of that promise that makes us live the blessed life. For when God made a promise to Abraham, because he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. We are reading down to verse 19, saying, Surely, blessing, I will bless you. And multiplying, I will multiply you. Those of you shouting, Amen. Thank you very much. And so, after he had patiently endured, he obtained the promise. For men indeed swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is for them an end of all dispute go on thus god determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of the promise the immutability of his counsel confirmed it by an oath that by two immutable things in which it is impossible for god to lie we might have strong consolation strong not just consolation strong consolation who have fled from refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us verse 19 this hope we have as an anchor of the soul both sure and steadfast and which enters the presence behind the veil by two immutable things he brought the scenario of when god was talking to abraham in genesis 22 god had to back up the promise with an oath so that man can believe him he said i swore and the bible says by two immutable things those things the word immutable means something that is unchanging it cannot change even if times and seasons change this one cannot change those two things are god himself and his word every promise of god for you is backed up by these two things number one himself that as long as he's unchangeable the Bible says in Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 It says I am the Lord I change not Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed Because I will not change And my word does not change He said it is impossible by those two things For God to lie We have a promise in God The Bible says we are his workmanship Created in Christ Jesus Unto every good work Which God has foreordained That we should walk in Forget about what the devil is telling you Forget about the depression that the devil is trying to bring on you. Making you feel second class. Every one of us have been called. The Bible says it, we foreordained that we should walk in it. It says he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, it says he made, chapter 8 rather. It says that you know the grace of our Lord Jesus. That though he was rich, yet for your sake he became poor. So that through his poverty you might become rich. You know what that means to me? That means that poverty is now a matter of choice. It's not a state of inheritance. It's not a predicament. If you are poor after this knowledge, it's because you chose to be poor. Because your poverty was exchanged. But apostle, I don't have any money now. The first thing you have is the wealth of that knowledge. There's nothing like a transformed mind knowing that this is my right. This is my inheritance. This is who I am. When you know that, you walk with an entitlement mentality and you will not sell yourself cheap for the temptations of the devil. Somebody's not hearing me this night. I feel like I should stop preaching here. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Because a lot of people, Satan is bringing 
Ishmael to them in exchange for Isaac. God promised Abraham Isaac in chapter 16. After 10 years, Isaac was not coming. Abraham's wife said, Sleep with my servant, my maid servant. She will give back to a child. We will still name him Isaac. After all, is it, is it, you still have a child, isn't it? But God told Abraham, he said, in Isaac your seed, not this one, in Isaac. That's the reason why not only should you know the promises of God made available for you, but you should learn to wait on that promise. The Bible says in Hebrews that this hope we have as an anchor. Hope means it's something that is a future expectation. That everything he has promised us will come to pass some of you are here God has promised you in your dreams great businesses worth millions of dollars some of you time and again you will see yourself in dream counting money counting dollars some of you have even seen yourself in a dream in a private jet you didn't want to believe it's a private jet but you just noticed you were the only one in the aeroplane my brother that's private jet that is private jet Then you woke up and say, ah, me, who dash monkey banana? Whether you dash monkey banana or not, he must eat banana. Sure you know. When God gave me those I am confession, I had nothing at that time of my life. I was not even anointed. But I will read it to myself. Confess it to myself night and day. After my prayer, I will read it and then speak in tongues. I wrote it on a paper, placed it in the room where I was. A room where we were staying with five, four other people, five of us. Small room. This me, this me, this apostle you are looking at. But I didn't allow that situation to define who I was. I knew that I was there only for a short time. I knew where I was going to. And a time will come when your life will be under pressure to bring into conformity that which your confession has declared. And I declare that it will be so for you. May every promise that God has over your life materialize for you. Some of you, God has promised you ministries across the nations of the world. I know you were born in Bew, General Hospital. I know you went to the LEA, the primary school. You went to a secondary school there. What's the name of that secondary school? Godia Private School. Abi? Then you made it to College of Education, Wakabu. That's a step away from. And all the abroad you know was when you came to Unimate. But God is telling you, I'm taking you to the nations of the world. A time will come where you, you, you will go to Australia, you will go to Asia, you will go to America. They will put up a red carpet reception for you. And that's when, and that time, when God, when it happens at that time, eh, God will flash back when you were standing in assembly line in Godia Private School. Please sit down, brothers and sisters. I don't boast to have much. I'm still contending for the manifestation of the blessings. But brothers and sisters, I have seen honor. Some that you will not see on social media. Pictures you will never find on social media. I've seen it. I've watched God brought me with great people, great men, with presidents. It's just that you will not see those pictures on social media. I've seen God bring people around struggling to bless. I say, is it me? And then I remember the one room. Time will come where we we'll own duplexes, not just house. I heard a man of God. I love that man of God. He's one of my mentors for kingdom prosperity. Pastor David Ibiume. He said, nowhere in this world will you give him two plots of land for him to live in. Where will he park his cars? See, hit your chest one more time and say, I am the blessed of the Lord. Say it again with faith. I am the blessed of the Lord. 
hold on to that promise it will come to pass it's not a lie it's not scam the bible says do it tarry wait for it wait for it wait for it a day will come those people who mocked you it will be before them god will preserve a few of them and he honor you before them my status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better day my status is changing no more decline i'm on my way i'm gonna sing it one more time my status is changing Are still drinking Gary now. You drank Gary before you came back. Hold on to the promise. Hold on to those promise. Who am I talking to? Listen. Listen. You can never convince me otherwise that God is a liar. You can't. Because the visions are still before my eyes where he brought me from. And that is an evidence of where he's taking me to. He told me that I will speak to nations. You just wait and see. We are just coming out of the cave. We have not started. This is not ministry. We are preparing. I told you that all of us here, we are the workers. God is giving us the nations. Somebody met me this week. By the grace of God, I was discussing with somebody. He said, ah, Papa, your videos are trending online. Oh. They are trending online. In my mind, I say, you have not seen anything. We are moving from videos to when we begin to open several branches across the nations. Yes. A time will come where you will become a model of prosperity. God will, God will, people will be praying and fasting for God to prosper them. And God will show them in a night, in the vision of a night, your face. God will say, follow this person. Because your life has become the full expression. Who am I talking to here? It, see, in one minute can you lift your voice and let's just pray and contend contend for that reality it must happen as god has said it it must come to pass as god has declared i am who he says i am i believe what you say he said though your beginning was small yet your latter end shall greatly greatly increase in jesus name please sit down two more and we are done i wish i can just close here so we'll go two more and we are done and i'll rush it because of time criteria or qualities of the blessed life number three is a life of faith the blessed life is a life of faith Genesis 15 verse 6 And Abraham believed God And it was accounted to him For righteousness And it was accounted to him Is a life of faith You must understand that faith is the greatest currency Of the blessed life <laughs> You can't be richer than your faith do you hear what I'm telling you? I may not have money, but I have faith. What is faith? Is a proof and a validity that God is who He say He is and He will do what He says He will do. Proof. It is on the strength of that faith that I make my boast, that I make confessions and declarations. 
that I act and do the things I do. Why? Because I believe that God is well able. Romans 4, 12 to 13 and then 16 to 22. And the father of circumcision to those who not only are of the circumcision, that is Abraham now, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while still or circumcised. For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. Verse 16 now. Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace. That means it is by faith you cash in, in all, you cash in on all that grace has made up available for you. The economy of the New Testament is grace. It's called grace. All that we have received in Christ is called grace. And it is by faith that we cash in on that commonwealth. That's why it says, Therefore it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise might be sure to all the seed, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the faith of us all. Next verse. As it is written, I have made you a father of many nations, in the presence of him whom he believed. God, this is the God he believed now, who gives life to the dead, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Hold on. If the Bible has said as, as though they are, that would have been okay. We can struggle to believe that. But the Bible says it calls those things that are not as though they were. That means things that are yet in the future, he addresses them as though they are in the past. Not even that they are in the present. That's the God that Abraham believed. Go on. He said, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he... Ah. how do you read bible sometimes who contrary to hope in hope believe there was nothing to be hopeful about that means there was no future this was a man who was 100 years there was no medical or physical explanation as to give hope that he can give birth to a child again both him and his wife but the bible says even against hope he believed so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken so shall your descendants be go on we are reading down to verse 23 and not being weak in faith he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about a hundred years old and the deadness of sarah's womb he did not waver at the promise of god through unbelief but was strengthened in faith giving glory to god go on and being fully convinced this is faith now that what he God had promised he was also able to perform go on and therefore it was accounted to him for righteousness being fully convinced King James says fully persuaded that's the life of faith you have to come to that point where you believe God above everything that even though it tarries your faith is unshakable you are not we are not even talking about the issue of faith because you have believed completely that's the reason why abraham could carry that name abraham for some years before he became abraham in reality you know the meaning of abraham father of many nations and god gave him that name when he had no child do you know that sometimes his servants mocked him do you know that sometimes the people around the land where he stayed mocked him abraham and he had no child but he carried that name you know why he was fully convinced that's the true explanation of the blessed life a life of faith luke chapter 1 verse 38 he said for with god nothing shall be impossible right okay yes that's verse 37 then verse 38 be it unto me according to your word that was mary's confession that is how faith speaks that is how faith declare and verse 45 look at what he said blessed is she that believes for there shall be a performance of those things which were spoken so if you believe there is surely going to be a performance your faith is the bridge that connects you from your past to your glorious future if you believe 
then you will receive if you believe then you will have it it is with faith that we transact in the heavenly realm and cash in on the promises made available by grace i've told you that faith jesus said in mark chapter 9 verse 23 it says if you can believe all things are possible it starts from believing god for your daily provision as simple as that that you believe that it is written that he daily loads us with benefit and you believe it well enough before stepping out that day knowing that before that day comes to an end you will collide with the benefit and the blessing made available for that day you have to believe it for instance for me i have come to a place where i believe that 48 hours cannot pass without a notable financial blessing i'm not this is not me trying to believe is my life now for at least the last one year and if you doubt i can give you my phone 48 hours if it pass we need to cast and bind there's a demon hanging on my roof I know that God, somebody somewhere must be troubled by God. I just believe it. Don't ask me how. I just believe it. He daily loaded us with benefit. Did he not say? Did he not say that the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you? Did he not say that strangers shall stand and feed your flock? And their kings shall minister to thee did he not say that they will come with their gold and their silver you have to believe it don't say that is an allocation for men of god or that's for another person many of us have excused ourselves and you know one of my mentors says if you keep giving excuses you will be excluded excuses are the ticket for being excluded every time you excuse yourself to say this promise does not look like my life you have excluded yourself from the provision of the same you must believe it you must believe god first for your daily survival and then you can begin to believe god for destiny how would the one million come to start that business you believe god prophecy came in 21 days god will give jobs miracle jobs amen ah then you start another discussion in your mind and that discussion continues with you till you go home hear the testimony of that young lady in fact i communicated with her this week and she didn't even share it with me so i was surprised myself after she shared the testimony of the money that was owed her father for 15 years and paid i said god me i want that grace too <laughs> can i tell you something every time we stand to prophesy and declare to you huh understand that the prophetic word is bigger than us the prophets oh i feel the anointing saying this now sometimes me i don't believe what god said i should declare but he said i should declare it so i declare it to his people we can talk about believing later but i must declare it this is god's word and time and again you see him come through for you you must live the life of faith psalms 112 verse 7 to 8 last scripture on this note and then we'll proceed psalms 112 verse 7 to 8 huh. this is the character of the blessed man this is the okay give us verse 1 give us verse 1 then come back to verse 7 he said praise the lord blessed is the man who fears the lord who delights greatly in his commandment so he's talking about a blessed man now a blessed life isn't it now look at one of the criteria there which is a life of faith he will not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is steadfast trusting in the lord the living bible says his heart is fixed verse 8 his heart is established on the word of god he will not be afraid until he sees his desire upon this is the life of faith brothers and sisters you must learn to believe god somebody once said is either you believe god or die 
many of you have come to that point in your life all that you have left is your faith i'm telling you to take that risk you are looking at a man who took a risk to trust god and i'm where i am today take the risk believe god when jacob left his father's house he left with nothing but a staff but isaac blessed him he said i bless you with the corn and the wine and the bread he said your brother's seed shall serve you but he ran away with just one staff he left every other thing for esau but when he was coming back 20 years later he came back as a nation he sent gifts to esau esau said what are these he said these are that which the lord has blessed your servant with esau said i don't need it jacob said i am so blessed please have it even if they rob you of your father's properties your father died and left property for you your brothers are trying to confiscate it or your uncles are trying to take it away from you they may take the material property but they can't take the blessing as long as you have that blessing on your life it will bring everything that was taken from you ten times over your father doesn't have to leave you a landed property you know many of you say ah, i didn't mean my father left me one property at least to his name i've seen families where the father die or the parents die and then you begin to see brothers and sisters at log ahead for material things things that will fade any house you build now 10 years from now is no longer relevant as far as architectural design is concerned and can i prophesy to you most of the houses you see in this city well built occupied by the children of the bonds woman god has shown me that in 10 years from now less than 10 years from now it will be transferred to us please write it down it's a prophecy it's a prophecy um saminu were in bill in 2018 right i was preaching one of those meetings and i gave a prophecy about that land and i said that the next power is shifting to the south of Bornu and the next leadership is coming to that land was it not the next year that they were elected and the deputy governor was from there I prophesied about that the market the road there was no road and I hear there is road there now believe it it will happen you know why because they spent all their money doing all that but unfortunately they have children that are not wise So by the time they die, the children will sell all the properties just to get money. And they will be so broke that they will sell it to us at a cheap price. And I tell you, when they sell it, I will change one street there and put my name there. God punish the devil. <laughs> put the name there. That's what it means to be blessed. It is a life of faith. How many will believe it will happen? Believe it or you may have zero in your account now. You may even be owing MTN. But brother, your future is bigger. <laughs> and if you are owing MTN, may God cancel that debt in Jesus' name. Why do you shout Amen now? <laughs> are we getting blessed? All right, number four and the last. I'm done tonight. Number four quality of a blessed life is a life that walks in obedience and the fear of the Lord. The blessed life is a life that walks in obedience and the fear of the Lord. Number one is to be called of God. Number two is to receive divine promises. Is a criteria of the blessed life. Number three is what? To live a life of faith. And number four, to walk in obedience and the fear of the Lord. You want to know if truly your life is the blessed life, you will find yourself walking in obedience stresslessly. Obedience becomes your lifestyle. Can I tell you something? The greatest proof of love for God is obedience. You want to be a recipient of the blessing 
Learn to walk in obedience. Learn to live a life that truly fears and reverences God. Psalms 128 verse 1 to 4. 128 verse 1 to 4. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in His ways. I pray that this scripture will be somebody's experience. He said, when you eat the labor of your hands, you shall be happy. Say amen to that. And it shall be well with you. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine. In the very heart of your house. He said, your children like olive plants. All around your table. That means they will be anointed and productive. He said, behold, pause. That means the above shall be the portrait of a man who is blessed and who fears the Lord. Obedience. I don't think God is as passionate about anything as obedience. Obedience is a cheap way into prosperity. Cheap. In fact, every time God gives you instructions to obey, He has subsidized his blessing to the barest minimum because first of all we didn't end the blessing it came by grace it came on the platform of the grace and the mercies of God but one of the qualities of a blessed life how you know that this life is truly the blessed of God is you find a work of obedience look at God's testimony of Abraham Genesis 18 verse 16 to 19 and then chapter 22 verse 12 18 verse 16 to 19 this is God's testimony about a man then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom and Abraham went with them to send them on the way and the Lord said shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing go on since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him next verse God's testimony he said, for I have known him. What does God know about you? Ask your neighbor, what does God know about you? And not only what God knows about you, does he know it well enough to boast it? He said, for I have known him in order that he may conduct, command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him I have known him that he will command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord Genesis 22 verse 12 and verse 16 God testified of Abraham that he truly feared God he and his household and he said do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him for now I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son your only son from him verse 16 and said by myself I have sworn says the Lord because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son only your only son verse 17 blessing I will bless you multiply I will multiply you I will multiply your descendants as the sea, as the stars of the heavens, Amen. and as the sand which is on the sea shore. Though the question tonight is, what does God know about you? Can God attest to divine, to obedience in your life? Obedience remains the greatest and the safest access into the benefits of the blessing Jesus said why do you call me Lord Lord when you do not do the things that I tell you in Matthew chapter 7 verse 21 and 22 he said only those who do the will of the father of my father that uh, that will call me Lord Lord he said do don't call me Lord Lord except you do the will of my father instructions instructions 
when we say instructions it may not just be money alone many of you would think it's see no no a simple instruction can be wake up every night by 12 and pray for seven days sometimes a simple instruction will be something that is rightfully yours god will say give it away maybe because it is being contested for by another person sometimes somebody's trying to trample on your right or take advantage of you and god will tell you allow him the blessed life is one that walks in true obedience you see when you walk in obedience to divine instruction you bring yourself into an economy in god that i call covenant just the way god swore by himself a promise can still be contested but when god backs up that promise with an oath it becomes a covenant promise plus oath is covenant and i tell you when you are transacting with god on the base of covenant eh not even the devil from darkness can stop it that's when you will know that there is something called authority not only do you have wealth but god will give you the authority and the power to bring people into that place that you can look at a man and say you are blessed and that man is truly blessed because that's what it means to be blessed obedience brings you into covenants are we ready to pray this night all i've taught you tonight is just the foundation the definition just so that you can understand what it means to be blessed next week part two i will talk to you about the power of covenants i want to show you something that will revolutionize your finances how many of you believe that some of us have been struggling too much there is a knowledge you need to rise from where you are but you can rise on your feet let's pray status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way to better days my status is changing there's no more decline i'm on my way this is somebody's testimony after this series. Status is changing. There's no more decline. I'm on my way to paradise. One more time. My status is changing. No more decline. your mouth and bless the Lord for what you have heard tonight if you know that there has been a shift in your mindset if you know that there has been a reorientation if you know that there has been a change some of you are now convinced that in Christ Jesus I have a promise open your mouth and bless him for this knowledge that has come open your mouth and bless him open your mouth and thank him Open your mouth and thank him. Hallelujah. You are going to pray three prayer points tonight and we are done. The first prayer point, you are going to say, Oh God.
by reason of the knowledge I have received tonight, I shake off, I shake off the stronghold of poverty, of lack, and of penury. Many of you are listen, many of you have been walking around with this stronghold around your mind. Something keeps telling you in your mind that you can never get richer than where you are. Something keeps speaking to you that no matter how much you have, you will always be broke. A mentality that money will always run out of your hands. So you are trying your best to mise it, knowing that it will be finished. We want to break that mentality. We want to cross that stronghold. The Bible says it daily loads us with benefit. And I told you that when God gives, He gives more than enough. That's the provision you have. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I shake off and I pull down every wrong mentality every stronghold of poverty lack lack and penury out of my life out of my life out of my life forever out of my life forever in the name of Jesus Amen. open your mouth and pray shake it up shake it up Every mindset of poverty, of penury, everything that has demined my personality, everything that has demeaned my personality, I shake it off now. In Jesus' name we pray. Please forgive me to say this, but some of us are great in our destinies. Some of us believe what I've just said this night. Some of us believe what the word of God said. But you come from a family it's like it is a curse of poverty. And so you, you find the average mentality of everybody in that family underestimating it, underestimating and undermining their worth. Making people in your family work as though they are lower than their worth. Have you seen people like that? They, every time you do something for them or a breakthrough comes for them, they begin to feel that they are not worth it. Can I tell you something? You are worth every breakthrough that God brings your way. You are worth every kind of favor that exists on this earth. If it's a cause, we'll break it from our background. Let me tell you something. The back, I quoted for you 2 Corinthians 8 9. He said that Jesus became poor so that through his poverty will become rich. Now, now that you know all the promises that you have in Christ Jesus, and that the Bible says they are yes and amen, what you now do is by prayer, you superimpose those realities into your life. You exercise priesthood and take, take away everything that has existed by reason of a cross, whether ancestral or territorial. Are you ready to break some crosses this night? Anything from my roots, from my background that fights my greatness or that fights the expression of the blessings of God in my life, I cause it to die now in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Kai, you are not praying enough. No matter. Can you get angry with every curse, every mindset, every spirit from your bloodline, from your father's house, from your mother's house, everything from your background, from your roots that fights the manifestation of the blessings of God. Every voice that keeps telling you 
that you will not be great, that keeps telling you that you will not be all that God says you are, that you will not be who God says you are. Cause it now. Cause it now. Cause it now. I refuse to be poor. I refuse to be broke. I am the blessed of God. I am blessed to be a blessing. I am blessed to play blessing. Break those curses now. Cross it now. In Jesus' name we pray. Everything that has limited you will be broken. This night, you are stepping into the blessing. That is God's design for your life. Regardless of your background. The Bible says of Jabez that he was more honorable than his brethren. But he was called Jabez, which meant sorrowful by his mother. But Jabez prayed a prayer. And we are praying it this night. In First Chronicles 4 verse 10. It says, Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my coast. How many of you want to step into a realm of enlargement? A realm of increase. Last week I was telling you, the Lord told me, you will not believe this, but there are some families where debt is a curse. There are some families where it is in the bloodline to always be indebted. And you know the Bible says that the borrower is what? Slave to the lender. But you are breaking out of that. I said you are breaking out of that. You are breaking into your God-ordained destiny. Your God-ordained dream. Your God-ordained purpose. Your God-ordained future. Can you lift your voice in 60 seconds and contend for greatness? Contend and lay hold of the future. The future of the blessing that is made available for you. Contend like Travis. He said, Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my territory. Enlarge my ghost. Enlarge my capacity. Set me up for greatness. Make my life an expression of the blessing. I refuse to remain small. I refuse to remain poor. I shake off from this low life mentality. Balo shaka pari akapa. Hallelujah. There's a song I want us to sing, but I need us to get the bridge. This song, I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I need the bridge. You split the sea so I can walk. Who knows it? Let the person that knows it hold the mic and sing it. You rescued me so I can stand and say, I am a child of God. Sing it again. You split the sea so I can walk right through. You speak the sea so I can walk right through it. Say, I feel so proud in your You rescued me out of poverty, out of smallness, into greatness. Oh, 
Hallelujah. Did you project? Can you project that? Can you project that? Um, that that bridge. I need the words. I, I need us to sing it and read the words. You split the sea so I can walk right through it. Who has it on a phone or something? That's that's what God is saying to my ears. Many of you must shake off every false news that the devil has spoken over your life all these years. You split the sea so I can walk right through. My feet are flowing. The, that's the line I want to hear. Sing it again. My feet are drowned in perfect love. Wait, my feet are what? Drowned in perfect drowned love. Drowned in perfect love. Yes. Listen. I'm not just, I'm prophesying to somebody. Many of us come from family because of all kinds of negative talks here and there. You don't feel loved. You don't feel provided for. You don't feel like you deserve the best. As Satan has created a stronghold of lies around your, your mindset. So it's becoming difficult for you to believe that you carry the blessing. That was Jacob's problem. He had the blessing, but it took 20 years before it manifested. You know why? His name, Jacob, altered it. Jacob means deceiver supplanter it means everything you get you will get by cheating somebody but you don't have to cheat to be blessed i want us to sing that song prophesy to yourself an anointing is coming on some people here are we ready you split the sea so i could walk right through it. My tears are drowning perfect love. So you rescued me. You rescued me so I could stand and say, Shout, say I am a child of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a to me. Say I am a child. Child of God, I am a child of God. One more time, hit your chest and declare it. I, I am a child of God. Lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I want to speak over your life. Listen to me. I came with a strong apostolic and prophetic grace this night to shift men to a place of abundance. And that anointing will land on some people. Everyone here that has lived a life of misery, of smallness, of penury, of lack and of poverty in a name that is above every other name, I stand by an apostolic and prophetic grace. And I declare, let the stronghold of poverty be broken. Let the stronghold of smallness be broken. I shift you to a realm of greatness. I shift you to a realm of possibilities. I shift you to a realm of abundance. I shift you to a realm of greatness. In the name of Jesus. Some of you come from families where it is a curse for men to labor and to strive and never see anything. But by the power of the blessing, 
I speak by this prophetic apostolic anointing that that mantle of the blessing comes upon your life now and every curse is broken now every limitation around your life is broken now is broken now I challenge you to his root I challenge the curse to his root and in the name of Jesus I set you free I set you free 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 now in the name of Jesus please lift your hands the Lord is showing me a vision there is somebody here you come from a family I'm seeing an idol a family idol I'm seeing an idol like a carved image under a tree and there is a hut close to that tree and the Lord is telling me that this is the this is the, the powers of your father's house that has enslaved the labors of men tied the destinies of men so that their hands cannot bring forth their hands cannot produce but it is written in the word of God, Isaiah 65 verse 23. It says, you shall not labor in vain, neither shall you bring forth to trouble. I stand by the power of the Holy Ghost. I curse that idol now. I curse those ancestral powers now. And in the name of Jesus, step into greatness. Step into greatness. I command all that you do to prosper. Prosper, 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 prosper. I'm angry this night, I'm telling you. I want to pray the favor of God upon your life. Listen, there is such a dimension of favor that makes you attractable to resources and men. I told you before that there are three doors open, favor opens for you. Door number one, resource opportunities. Door number two, resources. Door number three, the hearts of men. Where there will be men around you who just like you and want to help you. I stand by the grace of favor that is on my life and on this lineage that I represent. May that mantle of favor land upon you this night. Let it rest upon you this night. Let it rest upon you this night. In the name of Jesus. From today, walk with an entitlement mentality. Walk with a mindset that you are blessed. Forget about all the limitations of your father's house. The reason why God has allowed you to see it is because you are the record breaker. You are the limit breaker. Your life will be a mystery to those around you and in your father's house. They will look at you and say, when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Listen to me. Anyone that is here with a prophecy hanging over their life, I materialize that prophecy now. I command it to manifest now. Manifest now. Manifest now. In the name of Jesus. How many of you believe that? Can you wave your hands and give God praise? Now while we all stand before we close, all standing everywhere, no movement except the counselors, I want to make an altar call. The first qualification or criteria for the blessing is that you are called of God out of sin out of the world system you are redeemed to an inheritance that is incorruptible you are here and you want all the prayers that i've prayed to make meaning in your life you don't know jesus and you want to know him this night i want you to raise your right hand wherever you are everything that you have heard tonight and every prayer that you have received tonight can only work in your life when you are born again you need to carry the life of God in you. That's what qualifies you for the blessing. That is what separates you and qualifies you for the favor of the Lord. Lift your hands if you want to surrender to Jesus. You want to be born again. You want to receive his life. Or perhaps you were born again before. But somehow you have derailed or you are not sure of your salvation or again. 
and you say apostle i want a, my, a fulfillment of everything you have said in my life i want you to join them and lift your hands to heaven let's bring you back into the family of god and into the kingdom lift your right hand very well if you are lifting it up lift it up high over your head god bless you i see some hands god bless you dear you want to surrender to jesus god bless you this is where it begins now those of you that have lifted your hands i want to pray for you can you rush out quickly can you rush out quickly run as though you are running to receive a reward run as though you are running to receive a prize you want your life to become a manifestation of all you have heard you are tired of struggling but all of this will never be possible except you have the life of god those of you in front can you put your right hand on your chest and if you are following on online and you want to join them i want you to say the prayers with them and i'll pray for you put your right hand on your chest and say lord jesus i come to you today i believe that you died and rose again for my justification i receive eternal life i thank you for the blessing i thank you because i am now saved in jesus name amen please just raise those right hands to heaven i want to pray for you father i pray for this one what a beautiful day for them to return back to the kingdom i pray that their sins are forgiven and in the name of jesus you will write their names in the book of life i declare from today that they receive eternal life i declare from today that they become recipients of the blessing and all the days of their life they will never know smallness they will keep glowing from glory to glory. They will serve you in truth and spirit. In Jesus' precious name.